Hi everyone, good afternoon. Uh, good morning for those in different time zones to myself. Um, I promise we'll get started at two minutes past, so uh, we'll try and do that. So um, guys, welcome or everyone, welcome to my webinar on how to leverage voice technology for NPS and CSAT. So my name is Alex Fleming. I'm a product marketing manager here at Speechmatics. Uh, for those who have been to one of our Speechmatics webinar before, or even people who have been to one of my webinars before, welcome back. And if it is your first time, then welcome. Before we start in the same vein as the topic that we're going to be talking about, it's always great to get your feedback. If you have any comments on this webinar or any others that we provided um, and have any insight into ways that we could improve, improve these or you want more information, then please reach out. Uh, you can do that directly by dropping me a note on LinkedIn, for example, or by using hello at speechmatics.com. Also, if there are other webinars that you would like Speechmatics to do, please let us know uh, and we'll try and include these in the future. Uh, it could be anything from general ASR stuff to specific applications, any industries, and we can even pull in some of our partners to change it up a bit. Please just let us know and we'll do what we can. Either way, again, thank you for joining today um, and uh, I hope you enjoy today's sessions. For those of you who are not familiar with Speechmatics, we are a machine learning company that specializes in speech speech recognition. In its simplest form, we take voice and we transform it into text. We do this with fantastic levels of accuracy in 31 different languages, on-premise or in the cloud, to unlock the value of voice. This can be used in a variety of different use cases, from straight-up transcription to captioning, call analytics, e-discovery, compliance, to name but a few. Essentially, organizations can use Speechmatics ASR engine to innovate with voice and extract the value to enrich their business processes. I'll be making this webinar as interactive as I can. Um, I do have a poll in the middle, uh, and it would be great to get your insight on the question um, that we're posing there. You can also uh, raise questions at any point through the webinar, uh, and I'll try and answer as many of these questions as I can at the end. So please feel free to write them in the question section of the GoToWebinar control panel. My plan is this webinar is going to be around 35 to 40 minutes long. And that'll give us uh, loads of time at the end for any questions that you might have. Very quickly about Speechmatics. Our vision is to unlock meaning at scale by applying machine learning to better understand communications. Our mission purely is to set the standard when it comes to speech recognition. What we do, well, our any context speech recognition engine empowers companies and our partners to rapidly build innovative applications with voice. We work across loads of different sectors, uh, as I've mentioned before, from CX analytics, CRM, consumer electronics, security, media and entertainment, compliance, e-discovery, for example. Essentially, wherever you, you can find voice is where you'll find Speechmatics. We're based in Cambridge in the UK, uh, but we also have offices in Denver, Colorado in the US, Chennai in India, and Brno in the Czech Republic. So in this webinar, we're going to be investigating how speech technology is improving the way in which organizations and brands can capture and understand customer experience metrics, such as net promoter score and customer satisfaction scores. Some of the points that we're going to discuss more specifically around customer experience metrics are the metrics themselves and their role in delivering customer insight, what they can represent for organizations and how they can be used. The challenges around capturing them and how voice has the potential to save the day when it comes to capturing data and delivering insight that can be used to meet the KPIs of an organization or specific divisions and departments within that organization. We're also going to look at why voice and speech recognition is important and relevant here. What does it do that other tools can't? How it has the potential to augment or even replace traditional methods of capturing how customers feel, their loyalty to a brand, and their experience of the products and services that they use. There's also a big question to answer here too. With such a huge focus placed on NPS and CSAT scores, can brands properly trust the information that they deliver, especially with such a focus put on their results for potentially steering an organization's view of itself and the strategies it implements in the future? I think we have something in common. I once got told that this was the best way to start any kind of conversation, especially a business one. Having a joint interest makes talking about a topic more interesting and opens up the opportunities to not just share an experience and knowledge, but also gather the same insight and intelligence yourself. 
As a product marketing manager, I'm all about describing the great capabilities of the Speechmatics ASR product. I'm also passionate to learn more about the markets that we serve, our customers, their use cases, their experiences, both good and bad, and how they use our technology to innovate with voice at scale. Improving a service and solution is dependent on learning, learning about use cases, challenges, good experience, and where these need to be improved to ensure that our product and capabilities can keep delivering, growing and evolving. It's this way that we can ensure that our product meets the demands of our partners, their markets and their customers, and enables both them and us to grow. So I think we have something in common. I mean this in terms of wanting to deliver better experiences to our customers and markets by learning more about them. This is true for almost every organization, using tools to capture customer and user feedback to benchmark themselves, understand the loyalty of their customers, and ensure that their products and brand values always align with those of their customers. And the result, success all round. In the market, a common metric for measuring customer insight experience is net promoter score and customer satisfaction scores. The former trying to apply a score for the customer's loyalty and satisfaction, whilst the latter qualifying the degree in which a customer is happy with a product, service or experience. So why are these values important? NPS and CSAT both uncover information on customer satisfaction, each exposing different amounts of information for the organisation. In recent times, customer experience has been a priority for businesses and championed over other initiatives. To learn more about how voice tech can be implemented to enhance, enhance these customer experiences, there's loads of pieces of information on speechmatics.com, which I really encourage you to go and have a look at and check out. Better customer understanding enables brands to provide personalized and better experiences whilst creating customer loyalty. In turn, this enables brands to gain better predictability of their customers' behaviors, spend, and engagement, meaning they can make confident decisions whether that's projecting revenues or implementing change, whether that be organizationally, product, people, or in marketing and PR, to name just a few. Customer experience has a direct impact on a brand's reputation and revenues. A brand's ability to understand their customers enables them to create exceptional customer experiences, whether that be how a customer is spoken to when they call a contact center, or decisions that are made by an organization who might be creating and testing new products to solve a customer's challenge. From purchase decisions and payment methods through to delivery and after sales support, the ability to streamline these touch points builds customer loyalty through frictionless experiences. Organizations have been reliant on CSAT and MPS as a metric of loyalty and feedback from their customers. This is reflected in research published by Call Center Helper which showed that customer satisfaction is right at the top of the contact center's most important metrics. So why is NPS and CSAT, like why NPS and CSAT and what's the goal and the vision? Well, when boiled down to it, for me, I see these metric, metrics as fueling growth. Often growth is a key measure of success for organizations, whether that's growing revenues, profits, share value, their workforce, market share, or number of geographies that they serve. For C-level executives across the world, growth is a key artifact of success, one that is used to benchmark performance and attribute both success and failure. To achieve growth, organizations invest huge amounts of time, money, effort, and expertise into growing the KPIs that are most important to them. The benefits of growth stretch far beyond profitability and share price into a brand's exposure, reputation, and their customers' loyalty to them. With growth a primary focus for many businesses, it's important, it's important to understand what really fuels it, and that is the customer. For organizations, they want to know all they can. What is it the customers love about our product or our service? What do they hate? What is the low hanging fruit that with a simple change can go from an annoyance to being a great experience? And how do we make the changes to become the best? Are customers promoting uh, this service or this product to their friends, family, or business associates? If they are, or even if they're not, why? Whether good or bad, we want to know what they're saying. Leveraging insight from the customer is also critical to make operational changes. What's the frequency of complaints or poor experiences? If it's high in a certain area, it's 
prioritize first or if there's a chance to prioritize experience sorry if there's a, a chance to optimize an experience and profits associated with those through a relatively inexperienced change then this should be prioritized ahead of other elements loyalty is key and contributes to this growth factor having an engaged and passionate customer base that not only purchases the product but keeps purchasing and remains engaged is often the difference between good and great companies. For this reason, net promoter score and customer satisfaction are vital metrics for all businesses to understand the perceptions of their brand and products and determine their loyalty when making changes, including new products, any new services, or any changes to their messaging. Additionally, these metrics enable organizations to benchmark themselves within their market why have they been chosen over a competitor or even why a customer has decided to leave them and churn? So we've understand now why NPS and CSAT scores are important for organizations, but there are some challenges around getting this data and using it. So I've created a poll um, and it would be great to get your, your feedback on this, on this question about, you know, what is it? What are the largest challenges around NPS uh, and CSAT and what do they present to you? Is it around the mechanisms of collecting this kind of information? Is it around the volumes of the responses that you get? The quality of those responses, can you always trust them? Um, or are there other things, the things that we haven't considered or put in this in these uh, in these options? It would be great to understand kind of from you guys what uh, what you think about it and if there are other elements that we've not considered. You can also throw those into the chat or into any questions or something like that later uh, if you think that that's uh, if, if you think we should know about it i'll uh, i'll give it a couple more seconds cool so it's really interesting so the quality of responses and trusting the information is coming out on top and the two others kind of uh, are in sync with each other or aligned with each other so that's uh, that's really great to know uh, and that brings us really nicely uh, on to kind of like the next section of the webinar. So brilliant, guys. Thank you very much indeed for um, for doing that. That's great. Uh, and we'll carry on. Thank you again. So for organizations focused on customer experience, it's critical to be able to evaluate themselves and then benchmark their performance on an ongoing cadence, monitoring how they're faring compared to the KPIs that they've selected. For a long time, brands have focused on NPS as a key measure of success. The goal, to move the needle and how uh, and to improve their score, aka doing a better job of delivering a good service to their customers. However, doubts have been cast over the validity of NPS as a successful way of brands to understand the feelings of their customers. The Wall Street Journal commented that CEOs have become obsessed with this metric. Vital business decisions are being made on throwaway inputs from a small percentage of customers. Too much reliance is placed on a single number to measure the success of a brand or product. NPS gathering boils down to a simple, simplistic, short or even single word survey. While this encourages more responses through its simplicity, it only answers the what question. What do people feel on a range of one to ten? It ignores important questions like why do customers feel like this and how can we improve their experience? Which, change, which changes will make the most impact and should be prioritized over others? This can make a big difference when it comes to cost effective changes, making sure that those elements that impact customers the most get sorted first. These questions are essential to provide context and impart positive change. Customer experience is just as complex as the people that brands are looking to engage with. And so trying to boil down their experience into a single value can sometimes be misleading. It can be argued that NPS and CSAT collection methods are also flawed. NPS data is often gathered using a survey, whether as part of a UI or at the end of a call, for example. However, people don't always have the time or motivation to answer these questions. Incentivizing customers is a challenge. What can you offer them other than the promise that their feedback will make their experience better in the future? If you're um, anything like me, you'll have seen banners for organizations trying to get people to engage with them with the promise of a chance to win a set of AirPods, for example, if they do. There seems to be some weird connection between AirPods and surveys. They seem to be used a lot 
uh, to incentivize people to engage with them. Maybe everyone wants AirPods, but what does that mean for someone like me, who's an Android user? I don't know. Either way, even at Speechmatics, we did it. So um, there, there certainly seems to be something about them. With that said, it's not feasible to tell everyone who might take part in a survey that they could win something. Again, it's almost like buying feedback to an extent, and organizations need to understand the bias that this could potentially come with. Feedback is vital for organizations to improve their products, services, and overall brand experience. CSAT and NPS are key metrics that organizations use to monitor, but they are limited often to a single value. This might be enough for some organizations, but for most, they need to know why the customers feel that the way they do. As I mentioned, humans are complex with many elements contributing to how they rate an experience. It's tough to distill an experience down to a simplistic format, like a single value. The issue as well is by creating gates in a customer experience, like a survey, you encourage a number of behaviors. A caller might hang up if this is being used as part of a contact center interaction. It provides them poor experience. You might, on the other hand, get a legitimate response. This is great news. You're getting really valuable data about the experience that a caller might be having, even before they've spoken to an agent about the brand that they're engaging with. Or they might give a random response, as the customer is just keen to get to the next step within their engagement, and so will give an unrelated and random score just to get to that next stage. There are also surveys at the end of calls as well. I'm sure you've all experienced that when you finish the call with a contact center, whether that's your car insurance or anything else, there might be a short survey at the end of the call. In this instance, they might hang up immediately because they've got what they needed from that experience. Again, they could provide legitimate feedback. This is great news. Or they could leave some random feedback um, just because they felt that they wanted to. Due to this, the values that are received might not actually reflect a customer's feelings at all. But if they're given the same weight as legitimate feedback and the collated score won't truly reflect the overall experience. This means that organizations who are dependent on these scores to benchmark themselves and inform their strategy could be severely compromised. When it comes to the operation of insight gathering, a simplistic style slider or single tick box means you only get a simplistic answer, a numerical value. Yes, this means that you can benchmark against last week, last month, or even the last call, but what does this really tell you? On the other hand, complex surveys that can mean um, that you get a better quality of, of answer means that you often get lower engagement because the audience is required to give more effort to get this. Zendesk found that on average, brands receive around 21% response rate for their CSAT surveys. With CSAT and NPS response rates being quite low and the potential for some of these values to not actually be real, should organizations be putting so much value in the scores that they're getting through these traditional collection mechanisms? Additionally, with elements like contact centers in a brand's portfolio who are sitting on a wealth of customer data stored in call recordings, could this not be a better source of insight? So just to have a pit stop in the webinar so far and kind of go over what we know so far. So we know that we want to grow, be more successful, be more profitable, make better products and deliver better services to our customers. But how do we do this successfully? Well, we have to listen to our customers to understand how they feel about the, our products and the services that we provide to them and use this to gauge their loyalty. Simplistic data gathering through single value surveys are getting quite low engagement and only tell us the what and not the why. Incentivizing feedback is a challenge. And even when we do get it through short NPS and CSAT surveys, we can't always trust the data. So what's the possible solution to this? Well, calls between customers and brands include feedback and information about their experience. Speech to text enables these audio recordings to be investigated um, automatically and used with other tools to derive greater understanding of the customers without the need of a survey. CSAT and NPS are important and well-used metrics. However, they only so much information can be determined from their results. Brands must look beyond the numbers to gain deeper insight into customers' feelings and emotions to affect positive change. 
In the majority of cases, compliance legislation has forced organizations to record customer interactions of voice to enable them to meet legal standards. This means that calls are already being recorded, stored and archived. Voice to text enables these calls to be transformed into a potential goldmine of customer feedback. If organizations are already recording calls, then why not also extract value from them and turn them to your advantage? Organizations can extract meaning and understanding to better frame the metrics that they already receive through MPS and CSAT data gathering. Transcription of interactions means that organizations have access to the conversations to determine why they might see the NPS and CSAT scores that they do. Transcription also add, uh, enables additional added value services as well. These are just a few. It can be used in conjunction with natural language processing to understand the context of the conversations more fully, to power sentiment analysis to determine positive, neutral and negative sentiment, to be used to understand keyword spotting and topic analysis, and provide a means of better indexing and later discovering these interactions by searching for those keywords and terms that might be mentioned within that conversation. Additionally, transcription of words also delivers organizations a key data set to help them train their own machine learning, creating sophisticated and personalized algorithms, helping them to better understand the customers that their products and services are used by. However, it's important to remember that not all ASR and transcription engines will do here. ASR forms the foundation of these added value services, and so quality is paramount, considering things like lowest possible word error rate, robustness in real world scenarios like noisy environments, advanced punctuation for enhanced readability of those transcripts, and things like broad media format support as well to make them more usable. These are just some of the examples of the capabilities required to ensure the best possible outcomes, aka a true reflection of a customer's experience, sentiment and loyalty to the brand. When it comes to leveraging voice data to support or even replace NPS and CSAT gathering, organizations can utilize the recordings that they have in their contact centers. Some in the industry actually refer to contact centers as cost centers. However, when it comes to accessing data to support the gathering of customer insight, it's the contact center that might actually offer the best origin of information, turning the perception of the contact center essentially on its head in this case. Research from Call Center Helper suggests that contact centers analyze less than 3% of their interaction. This leaves 97% of call data untouched, likely due to the cost and effort involved in investigating audio files. Transcription is one of the first steps in automating the ability to leverage 100% of these recordings, both quickly and efficiently. Often organizations talk about the challenge of big data and unstructured data, However, this rarely focuses on the data format itself. In terms of audio, it's always been a difficult format to investigate, but transcription unlocks the value held within. It provides a text-based format able to be processed without requiring calls to be listened to individually. Organizations can get feedback directly from customers' conversations, straight from the horse's mouth, if you will. And the result of this? Insight can be extracted more quickly without huge numbers of people and so far more cost effectively than before. With the call archive available to them, organizations can also cross-reference low NPS and CSAT scores with the calls to expose the factors that might have contributed to them and potentially what they can do to again move the needle. Organizations can then use voice data to augment their NPS and CSAT metrics. In no way am I saying that voice is the whole answer here, but it can have a significant impact on contributing to the knowledge gathering activities and provide more meaning to validate the challenges and the metrics that are delivered through traditional NPS and CSAT scoring. The potential to, again, remove clunky surveys tagged at the end of calls and instead provide the opportunity to leverage the interactions between the organization and the customer enhances the quality of the data with no impact on the customer but it does require best-in-class ASR to unlock the insight held within these calls. For this reason, brands no longer should be constrained with simple, simple numbers to determine how they're performing. By utilizing technologies like voice, companies can unlock deeper levels of customer understanding beyond traditional CSAT and NPS numbers. 
I refer to the contact centre quite a lot in this webinar so far, and there's a reason for this. This environment has the capability to add great value when it comes to applying speech technology. Let's face it, the contact centre is already a hotbed of innovation with the introduction of voice tech like voice box, automated IVRs, agents and assists, and not to mention a whole raft of speech analytics products and services. But this tech can also be applied to optimize customer feedback mechanisms and benefit the organizations just as much as solutions that have benefited the customer in the past. Organizations need to be looking to extend their capabilities of their voice services, implementing a voice first strategy and applying these technologies across their organizations, not just siloed in specific areas across their brand. Interaction between brands and, and customers can come in many different forms, from face-to-face -face in physical locations, although not so much at the moment, to social media, to product reviews on third-party sites. Even though these channels do exist, the contact center is a vital communica communication touch point for most brands. The contact center represents the front line in terms of omni-channel customer experience. It offers insights through, through customers across their buying journey and even for elements considered outside the contact center, such as delivery or even purchase. The brand's NPS is heavily reliant on the way that contact centers communicate with their customers. While voice is king, there are still some that feel that calling a contact center is a last resort and a time-consuming and painful experience. So the ability to optimize their experience through utilizing speech technology and streamlining that experience by cutting out things like surveys has the potential to provide a highly positive impact on that customer's experience. The contact center is one of the best places to also gather customers' insight. It's at this point in their customer journey that they are most engaged and provide feedback on their experiences, even without an agent or a survey directly asking them about it. The voice interaction of a customer gives a pretty good indication of their feeling, and so means that voice tech can collect data passively without slowing down a journey and with no effort from either the agent or the customer, which delivers a huge advantage for both. While contact centers provide the opportunity to tag surveys to the end of calls through an automated system after the agent's disconnected, it's tough to drive engagement here. There's no incentive. And if you're anything like me, as soon as you have what you want, you'll drop the call. Transcription provides the ability to extract the words, power the capabilities of added value services, and mean that voice can be used in conjunction with other omni-channel text-based formats like SMS, email, or even social messaging for a full understanding of that customer's journey and experience. ASR sits in a unique position in the flow with access to both the raw audio and subsequent transcript. It's here that there's the potential for the most to be gained using underutilized information that could add even more value in the future. With that said, today, even the most advanced things like sentiment analysis systems utilize ASR and the text they output as their primary data source. According to Magnetic North, poor customer experience costs UK brands 234 billion a year in lost sales. It's never been more important to eliminate these poor experiences. Furthermore, turning detractors into advocates delivers better brand loyalty and drives growth. It's never been so easy to slate an organization or a bad experience on, a ver on very public platforms like social media. And so transforming bad experiences into good ones by the end of the call is incredibly powerful. Real-time workflows helping contact center agents positively steer conversations before they have the opportunity to go off track, supported by a wealth of information at their disposal, triggered from keywords in their interactions, unlocked by ASR. These words can then be used to automatically trigger workflows to optimize their agent's knowledge and ability to deal with challenging situations. The advantage is that customers aren't required to have a bad experience before an agent can provide the opportunity for them to have a great and personalized one. A recent PwC study found that 32% of customers would consider leaving a brand, even one they loved, after just one poor experience. With voice technology, contact centers can use voice-enabled CSAT and MPS data to truly understand customers' loyalty and feelings 
to avoid these negative experiences. Additionally, non-compliant behaviour can be mitigated by alerting a supervisor when certain words and phrases are mentioned on a call. Moreover, if certain questions are raised by customers, knowledge basis uh, knowledge based articles can be pre-populated and serviced to an agent's dashboard to help them guide a conversation that might be required. ASR plays a key role in exposing the words held within these conversations and means that this functionality can happen seamlessly and in real time. This can provide the means to diffuse what might be an interaction that delivers a poor CSAT score into one that is informative and clear, reducing the need for future calls and delivering a positive CSAT score. Also has the capability to add to a potential of delivering a better and first call resolution. As I mentioned, real-time transcription empowers tools like sentiment analysis to help agents deal with a variety of customers' emotions. ASR and voice tech enables a proactive approach to CSAT and MPS, which empowers organizations to roll out tools to meet the demands of their customer experience without having to use surveys post calls that have the potential to receive poor or low engagement. Voice can provide new ways of looking at NPS and CSAT as well, and as well as providing the opportunity to tran transcend conventional means of capture and delivery. But technology like ASR that delivers better performance at Insight also needs to be easy to use. The advancement in machine learning powered tools like AI and ASR is not only delivering enhanced capabilities, but the means to be operating uh, more simply and more effectively. While often technical teams are still needed to install and manage products like ASR, they are becoming easier to use. Additionally, large organizations and contact centers can utilize specialist solution providers with ASR as part of their suite of capabilities with easy to use UIs, delivering additional value on top of raw transcription. This approach reduces the time to market of ASR and the optimization that it can provide to the contact center and its staff. Where previously organizations might be challenged to adopt solutions like ASR due to their complexity, now the use of open APIs means that organizations can simply pick and choose the right solution providers for them without being locked into monolithic end-to-end -end providers that might be unable to keep up with the rate of innovation available from standalone ASR vendors or specialists that use ASR to deliver best-in-class capabilities in a specific field like analytics, sentiment analysis, or agent assist, for example. Contact centers and organizations have never been so empowered to select these the best solutions for them, delivering the best performance and being simple to operate. Now, the journey from unstructured data to optimized NPS and CSAT can be greatly accelerated with less effort and less people power required. So, in conclusion, NPS and CSAT provide organizations with the knowledge to make informed decisions and enable their growth. The customer is what fuels growth, and so listening to them is vital to enable better products and services and encourage loyalty. Traditional net metrics gathering for CSAT and NPS go some way to getting the data, but by no means are enough. Harnessing voice delivers better information gathering, delivers the what and the why, and can do so without the need of surveys that get low engagement and might not even give a true reflection of the customer's emotions, feelings, and experience. Organizations need to be looking at a true voice first strategy, rolling out voice tech solutions like ASR or products and solutions that feature ASR across their whole organization to service more information than ever before. These strategies should also not be limited to external applications, aka what are my customers saying? but also internal use cases. What are the people within my organization saying and feeling? Use cases like transcribing internal meetings and all hands to optimize knowledge sharing and being more transparent. Recording and transcribing business meetings to enhance the knowledge of partners and the capabilities of those partners. Enhancing knowledge bases and using real world solution solving to train up new members of your teams. And these are just a few of the examples of how voice can deliver a step change in the generation of information that organizations can use about their customers and themselves. ASR 
has many applications and capabilities to help organizations grow by understanding how people both internally and externally feel about their products, solutions, and experience. More and greater understanding beyond just CX numbers enables organizations to deliver better experience to their customers, increase, increase loyalty, and enable those users to become brand advocates, delivering enhanced growth and all the benefits associated with them. Thanks everyone. So that kind of brings me to uh, an end. I hope to be between 35 and 40 minutes and at 37, I feel quite happy with that. <laughs> so um, now it's uh, an opportunity uh, for you guys to raise any questions that you might have. Um, is there anything that you wanted to pick out from anything I've said uh, that you want to ask any questions about, uh, about ASR in general? Um, it would be great to, uh, to have some questions. So please feel free um, to drop those in the box and I'll try and answer as many as I can, as well as I can. <laughs> okay. So does Speechmatics currently leverage emotion in their technology stack? That's a great question. So um, we don't at this time. Uh, so Speechmatics focuses very much on um, our core product, which is transforming speech to text. So we do that really, really well. And the reason we do that is we focus really heavily on that. Um, so we have partners um, who do uh, the sentiment analysis part. Um, so often if, if uh, people come to us and are looking for that or looking for sentiment analysis that's fueled by transcription, uh, we would um, talk to one of our partners and try and uh, bring them together with one of our partners. It's very much how we work as an organization. Um, we're very focused on that transcription capability but if uh, people do come to us and they want additional uh, capabilities on top of that raw technology, on that raw transcription, then we often kind of bring in a partner to make sure that they get the best solution that they require. Um, that's not to say we wouldn't uh, look to do it in the future potentially, but currently it's not something that uh, we do in our technology stack at the moment. But great question, thank you. So uh, how do you use, how could you use sentiment to understand NPS and uh, CSAT is another question that's been raised. And it's a really interesting one, actually. Um, so um, sentiment has, has a great way of, you know, showing people through a conversation what might be, you know, how that, that customer is feeling. A lot of the times an agent who's interacting with uh, a, a customer will have a good, you know, emotional sensibility and be able to understand that. But when we're thinking about utilizing maybe um, an autonomous system like, um, you know, you might have an IVR solution at the beginning, you have to think about how AI is potentially used in different situations. By using sentiment analysis, for instance, you can understand maybe how you could route a call more effectively or how you could talk to someone a bit more dif a bit differently. The experience you might have if you were calling up a bank, for instance, um, might be very different to calling up something if you were in distress. Um, and so being able to understand the sentiment of a call autonomously, um, if you did have to go through that IVR system, uh, is really powerful to ensure that, that you're giving the best experience that you can. I think one of the big things around CSAT and NPS is, and building loyalty, is about showing people that you're not wasting their time and you're listening to them. And I think brand loyalty is built on the fact that, that customers feel listened to. And I think that's really important with lots of different use cases. And so by having something um, where that you can either optimize uh, an agent's performance by understanding and logging those sentiment elements, or by using that as a trigger of how you treat people differently is incredibly powerful. And one that organizations should really be considering. If you're ringing up and um, that, and you're, you interface with an automatic tool straight away, and there is a level of sentiment analysis on there, and it understands that someone might be upset about something, and then you also understand what they're upset about, it provides an, a whole new opportunity to route them to someone who might be specially trained in a specific area, or who understands better about their problem. So um, sentiment analysis is incredibly important, and using text not only to power that, but also in conjunction with that um, can offer um, great kind of customer experiences and then enhance uh, those positive scores and the loyalty that people have. 
so yeah another great question i could talk about it for ages actually um and and what you know sentiment has to offer both engaging with with humans and with other ai tools um so yeah that's uh that's really powerful um okay so how does speechmatics asr deal with different accents that are spoken in contact centers worldwide that is a fantastic question so we are very different in the way that we deliver our language models so where there might be um english for instance that is available in lots of different accent and dialect packs um, from other providers we do a single one which we call global english so global english we have trained on as as the, the widest diversity of accents that we could possibly find so what that means is that our partners can deploy a single english pack that can be used um, no matter the accents that they've got so this means that it's super efficient you only have to deploy one language model um, and that can be that can be used by everyone you don't have to um, you know use a specific pack because um, that person on the call might have a specific accent especially if you find two people on a call have different accents that can be again really difficult we also look at not only the accents, but also looking at um, you know, background noise. What are those things that happen within, um, within those calls that might impact um, how the accuracy that you could get out of transcription? So um, yeah, we also look at, at bringing those things in um, as best we can. So uh, we have 31 different languages that we support. Um, we have global English, uh, is was the first of our global languages and we've just extended that in the latest release that came out a couple of days ago into Spanish as well so Spanish has lots of different accents that it is built upon um, so we're calling that again a global Spanish model so uh, yeah global English and global Spanish so we have two global languages um, although the rest of our languages we try and um, put as many different accents um, as we can so you'll never see um, you know, multiple accent or dialect packs for a single language from Speechmatics. We try and simplify things as best we can. So even some languages which we don't claim to be global um, might have different accents that we've been able to uh, train them on as well. So we really encourage people to to get in touch um, if they want to test out these languages. Um, so yeah, uh, what clients do you have in Spanish? Um, it's a good question. I don't know our entire. Um, our entire partner list off the top of my head uh, or those in specific territories but um please feel free to get in touch with us um if you want to have uh, any any more information about um kind of who's utilizing our spanish um and and kind of get some feedback on that okay how does speechmatics asr deal with diarization so separate speakers during a conversation um it's a good question so uh we have two diarization modes so we have speaker diarization um and we also have channel diarization so with speaker diarization we do have the capability to identify speakers within uh, a monostream and we also have channel diarization so we will be able to transcribe the individual channels uh, for instance and um, attribute a kind of a speaker to those channels and then uh, merge it all together for the transcript which gives often a, a higher level of accuracy in, in regards to um, the diarization output we also have a feature called speaker change, which is again a little bit different. Where um, in an output we will um, we will say something like um, there's a marker within the output that says we believe the speaker has changed. That's not attributing it to a speaker or a person. It's just saying the speaker has changed. Oh, sorry. Do we have Spanish clients? Yes, we do. So yeah, we have uh, we have, we have uh, clients from all over the world. Um, we also have um, a huge diversity of speakers within our organization, which again is really powerful. So um, we have you know, employees from all over the world who are really great at, at testing our languages. Um, so yes, we have Spanish clients, uh, we have Spanish staff, we have a great diversity of both customers and uh, people internally. So uh, yes. Okay, so I've just had another quick question come in. So um do you define what positive negative and neutral um is so going back to the sentiment analysis question so um that's not something that uh that we kind of get involved uh with so that would be kind of a question to one of our partners who was 
maybe providing that sentiment analysis uh, solution. So, um, you know, if, if sentiment analysis is something that's really important uh, to you uh, and you wanted to use really high performance ASR um, that's driving that, that sentiment analysis solution, then please reach out to us either through hello at speechmatics.com or drop me a line through LinkedIn or something like that. Um, and we can have a further conversation to maybe get you uh, in touch with the right people who can ask, answer more specific questions around uh, sentiment analysis. Uh, but yeah, please get in touch. Um, and I think that's all the questions that we've got. So thank you so much, everyone, for um, engaging. If it's anything like me and you're in the UK, we're having a bit of a hot spell, so it's quite warm. So I really, I really appreciate people, um, people joining that. Uh, this session today, so I really appreciate that. So unless there's any more questions, which I can't see uh, any more questions that have come in, but if you do have any afterwards, please let us know um, and we'll provide that. Um, there will be a link to, to this uh, session later, which we'll, which we'll send out to people, so don't worry about that. Um, and yeah, if you've got any other questions or questions that I haven't seen in the dialogue box, um, then we'll go through those and make sure that we send out appropriate answers um, to you guys. Um, but with that, you've got all my contact information if you need to reach out. Um, and with that, I will uh, bring, this, uh, bring this session to a close. So thank you everyone very much for attending. Um, have a great rest of your week and um, all the best. Thank you.